All right, what's up guys, how's it going? So basically today, it's gonna be a little bit more of a different video. I've kind of had the vision for a while, you know? I wanna constantly improve my content and kind of make it more enjoyable to watch because I already know, I, I guess I may be an enjoyable person or not because even if it's not a lot, I mean, Again, a couple hundred people will view my videos is no easy task, especially for somebody that knows nothing about marketing yet spend countless years in a marketing class. Um, so I'm just gonna cook a bunch of damn eggs. And I'm gonna eat them, kind of talk about what's been going on. Cause it takes me a while to like concur my videos because I have to wait for something to happen, wait for my eyes to open. But for somebody that kind of like chases their dreams and whatnot, I would say it's uh, not very hard to find inspiration. So what I'm doing right now is I tried to filter these eggs, but honestly, I can't. So I'm gonna put two yolk in my eggs because I don't want to hide my cholesterol too much, but you know, I can I can still I can handle a little bit before I go out tonight. Um wow, <laughs> there we go. Crack crack one right right nicely. Now I wash my hands before this, as you should, and you kind of just filter all that egg white through your fingers and don't let the yolk slip through which can be a harrowing task at times, but as you see with me being a little bit messy, get the job done. I'm gonna do five eggs. Each egg, if you buy like a grade A large egg, it's around five grams of protein. So I'm getting around 25 grams of protein, plus I'm going to have myself a shake whenever I sit down with you guys. So <laughs> I'm just gonna cut to the chase. I'm gonna fucking clean off my hands and I'll get them cooking. All right, so now I've got my eggs in this cup Oh shit, I just spilled them everywhere. <laughs> but you get your eggs in the cup, um, wipe up all the egg yolk you spilt, but hopefully you are not like me and you have some sense in you. And also you aren't filming a video. Um, you wanna get your pan. You wanna pan this pan up, I'm telling you. And already get it going on low, cause why not? Maybe like two or three. And grab some salt. I do a little bit of salt here. I don't know why, I couldn't tell you. There's no science to it, I just like doing it. And then. Get all the pepper I can, just yam it in there. The more the merrier, because honestly, I eat for fuel, I don't eat for taste, so you can enjoy anything you want on there. Now, my pan's getting a little bit hot. I would touch it because I'm impulsive like that, but no, it's not the best thing. So, I'm gonna pour it on there, I'm gonna wait for it to get hot, and I'll show you. All right, so I've got these things cooking right now. As you can see, looking like eggs. So <laughs> that's, that's all you can put it, but, I would if I did have some cheese. I know I was very ill-prepared, but every time I go and make these videos, I kind of want to do it impromptu. I don't really want to put too much thought into it because I want to give you all the most authentic kind of vlog-style video that I can. And with that, of course, my eggs are cooking. I've got to flip these Johns. And honestly, I'm not a pro chef. Never have been. I've always just kind of cooked because I've had to. I've, I've been cooking for myself for a wee bit now, albeit I started off on TV dinners and now I kind of started meal prepping a little bit. Sorry for bringing the chain out. I'm really actually sorry for that. That was very fucking cringe. But now I've kind of get myself an egg white and yolk mess right here. I'm going to have fun cleaning that pan, but it's all going to be worth it because once I sit down, I'll be enjoying my food, I'll be enjoying my shake, and I'll get to talk to you guys. So I'm just going to flash forward it until I get over to the dinner table. All right, so I found myself at the dinner table for the first time in God knows how long. I, you can see the pain through my eyes. Um, I've got myself a little egg souffle here. Got myself a little cup of, um, it's the only thing I can find that I could mix with. Um, I've got myself a little ghost protein shake in there. Nothing too crazy, but you know, 25 grams of protein. This is a 50 gram protein snack-esque kind of thing. I had Olive Garden today because I'm still categorizing myself on the bulk or even main gaining at this point. I mean, around 3,000 calories a day if I were to stop right now, but obviously I'm not. I love feasting. Now then, <laughs> um, it's kind of it's kind of weird being at this dinner table. Uh, that's kind of why, why I get into. Um, everyone has their own backstory. Everyone has their fair share of problems that kind of morph them to their own version of Batman, I would say. That's why a lot of um, men with emotional problems tend to look towards other people, look forward to seeing strong male characters, and not even men, but every everybody in their own right, looks forward to like seeing their role model and become very attached to them. From a young age, um, I really haven't had uh, much in-person male influence, much uh, time just hanging around being a normal kid. Um, I was just kind of 
conditioned to be on my own emotionally and developmentally. Um, it gets to me. Um, as strong of a person as I may be, I've cried so many times after this kind of realization that I've had 17 years of my life without a really, really having any type of support and influence from a very early age. Um, every kid gains consciousness uh, once in a while. They'll, they'll gain it, uh, I'd say, around the age of like five or six. It's very good, by the way. Um, love me some egg whites just because they're easy to get down and they kind of suck up everything that uh, you put on it. Anyway, um, for a very memorable age, I've just never really had anyone. It's always uh, been a part of me. And I've used multiple ways. My most recent just being, you know, fucking pumping iron and shit. Sure, I look good, but <laughs> there's an immeasurable amount of pain in my eyes that I just have to deal with and get on. And after realizing this, I just broke down. I, I, there's so many things I can pinpoint my existential dread on. But in all reality, I think it's just because I've come to the sudden realization after finally getting time to see what a family actually looks like and have that set in my head, which I have a whole post on Instagram about that. If y'all are interested, I really don't know if y'all would be because <laughs> it's a, if, if I were just some random dude looking at it, I'd be like, damn, this dude's life sucks. Um, but you always see me smiling. I, I don't really, I don't get down that, that much. And it's because you kind of have to, you should never let your past or any of your trials and tribulations in your life define you. In fact, I consider my life to be a lucky one. If I had a perfect life, if I had a perfect upbringing, um, I would not be the man that I am today. Sure. I may not have had to resort to coping with, a being mean to people, being brashful, being, uh, you know, overeating, being overweight most of my life just because of how I was raised, how we've kind of been, you know, rolling for a couple of years now. I think my parents got divorced when I was like seven or eight. But it's just a fact of life. I mean, I wouldn't be nearly the person I am without all the struggles that I've had to go through. And you just kind of have to look at it like that instead of being down all the time about it. That's why everyone has their coping mechanisms. But truly, to go past your coping mechanism is to just thrive off of that. I loved having a shitty upbringing. I loved having all these things working against me because it pushed me on this treadmill that is life to work against it, to go against the curve, to go against what I thought that God had for me. Because in all reality, God wasn't giving me all this for nothing. He was giving me all these challenges so I could grow off of it and become a person. Because I'm, I'm a shit. Everyone is born is something sculptable so you may have good parents you may have pe parents that you know force you to play in rec sports that uh you kind of fucking hate it until you realize hey oh my god these guys were actually trying to build my character or it may just be the fucking hopeless fatherless kind of running on empty uh not really having much to your, to your name like i was and that's perfectly fine the point is Whenever you look at your life and look at all these struggles, you should never be sad. You need to always work against them, work past them, and use them as kind of weights to strengthen your mind. And say, damn it, I've come so far. That's, that's all it is. If you let these things control you, you'll never find true serenity in life. You'll never try and find true peace. Because you need these things. You need to realize that your life isn't shitty. You're just conditioning yourself. It's like how MMA fighters, you know, they'll fucking get their shins purposefully like splinted and shit. They'll beat themselves up. It's all to train for this big obstacle. You're going to have so many big obstacles in life. So why worry about the things that are behind you? You've already worked through them, dude. You have already done everything in your power that you can control to get past this. And if you haven't, now you look at it and you fucking can. That's the beauty of life. It is moldable to your own perception. If you truly want to do something, if you truly want something to change, if you truly want to take advantage of the situation that you were dealt, you can. It is amazing. And that's kind of what 
my mind has been facet on this past week or so. I've done obviously a lot of self growth over the past almost damn year now. Almost a year I've been sober. Almost a year I've been, it's not even the most important part, but because of my sobriety, I've been dealt whole playing cards, whole fields of playing cards that I have at my disposal to become a better person and to grow into somebody that I aspire to be. Anyone can do that. And you don't have to stop it a year. I, I, I know in another year I'll be in a, in, a, in a different place, in a much happier place and a much more pristine headspace. But you just have to constantly grow and build off of these obscurities that you were dealt. That's all I want to say, you know. I truly think that everyone has it in them. Everyone has it in them. And nobody is told that, you know, everyone wants the sympathetic approach. Everyone wants the, I'm so sorry for that. You don't need a sorry. All you need is yourself telling yourself, I'm going to be better than that. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure I am not placed in that same situation. I'm going to grow from it again. It's just beautiful, guys. So anyways, I'm going to finish my little egg souffle. I'll hope to see you all in the next one.